So Plectivist uh, was born out of uh, the wish of mine to uh, once produce a music video, yeah? but as a visual artist, not as a music video producer. It's a collaboration with the famous rap trio from New York, Flatbush Zombies, and it deals about Black Lives Matter, police brutality and gun violence. It consists of two parts. One is a classical music video uh, with the rappers. Uh, the second part is more of an analytical reflection of what is going on in the music video and also it interviews uh, the three rappers about contemporary conditions of their existence. And uh, at the time I was living in New York and it was 2015 and it was the moment of Black Lives Matter. You know, it was the most urgent uh, political theme dominating the US media. Thousands of people were on the street. So um, at the same time I read an uh, article by um, Questlove uh, that was called Why Hip Hop was, uh, Failed uh, Black America. And in that article um, it was quite interesting that hip hop had been commercialized in order to address a wider audience. That also means a white audience. Yeah? And I thought that was really interesting that hip hop lost somehow its roots through capital capitalism and music industry. I thought that could be actually quite an interesting piece of art which tackles both popular culture and uh, let's say high culture as art is still considered um, and at the same time it would allow us to politicize hip-hop again with a strong message and bring that message um, not only to YouTube but also to the museum yeah because there's a shift between a YouTube audience and a museum audience and that's something I'm also very interested in why we still have these barriers and that was kind of the framework uh, for my research. So finally I met the Flatbush Zombies and they had already a song drafted that they were thinking to produce and that song became later on Blacktivist. And after the song was finished we started to produce collaboratively a music video. Yeah? And part of the music video was then also to think about gun violence and the First and Second Amendment and uh, through our research we came to uh, Defense Distributed the company that produces uh, 3D printable guns. So part of the music video is also shot in the workshop. This very complex situation is somehow reflected in a five minute music video that we also published uh, after the first exhibition took place in New York on YouTube. And uh, up until today, it has roughly 3.4 million clicks. The second work in the exhibition is uh, called Approximation in the Digital Age. To a humanity condemned to disappear. It's a work I produced in the southern uh, most urban environment on this planet in Porto Williams, uh, in Tierra del Fogo, on an island called Chunuco. That work deals about an indigenous culture that is condemned to disappear. So, in other words, uh, the uh, remaining members of the indigenous community, the Yagan, uh, are about to die out and the culture somehow undergoes a tremendous um, change and alteration. So, one could expect that this culture would not exist in a few years. The situation was that I also feel like an intruder. So it's a community that is altering through capitalism, global economy, but also through marine biologists, sociologists, and anthropologists. They all interfere with the uh, community. And I wasn't a tourist, I wasn't a scientist, uh, um, I wasn't a member of the army, so I was a complete stranger, but more by my behavior, uh, because they didn't know in which um, position they, they put me. Yeah. So, but it happened that um, they got curious about me and they got in touch with me. So I became somehow somebody who would help them out with certain things, like driving a car for example. And uh, that allowed me to build a relationship and out of that relationship uh, the film emerged. Yeah, but it was a, a very long process, so I lived there four months. It was a way of getting to know each other, respect each other, understand each other, not through the language per se, but maybe through spending time together. Yeah? So a lot of knowledge um, that the film depicts comes out of the community. It doesn't come from me asking questions, which is the difference between me and an anthropologist, for example, or a, a conventional filmmaker. It was more about that they felt they would like to explain me things. Yeah? I'm trying to give an uh, inside look of a situation that undergoes a brutal transformation. Uh, it's a film also that questions their role in the decay of their own culture. That's very important to me. Yeah, so it's a reflection and I'm part of that reflection and I offer a way to look at the culture very differently than many anthropologists have done. Uh, the third work is entitled again Noch einmal, which was produced in uh, East Germany. Uh, it deals with a very special case uh, in which uh, a Kurdish Iraqi refugee was attacked in a supermarket by four men. It was uh, filmed by an unknown woman later on uploaded on YouTube and it went viral so that the police investigation started. One of the 
key aspects of that case is that the man was bound to a tree by the four men. The trial itself only lasted less than four hours uh, and the four men walked free. The film analyzes and reenacts uh, this uh, yeah, criminal case. What I did additionally, I invited 10 people, 10 Germans, with a migration background. People that live uh, since 30 or more years in Germany, that I consider German, but that have a very different view towards such actions and situations. I wanted to learn how this group of people would judge what they see. They had no prior information. So again, reconsiders uh, this very special incident and it has to deal with like populist politics, with the refugee crisis in uh, Germany and Europe and our understanding of the media. Again tackles, as I said, how do we do uh, with refugees, how do we do with uh, alien citizens who might not speak our language perfectly, how do we deal with them and most of all again questions what is civil courage and what is vigilante justice. Yeah? And um, in the past years we have seen much more um, violent attacks on, on immigrants. So since again had a lot to do also with media representation, the film looks a bit like a to re crime thriller. Yeah? So I adapt an aesthetic that I think gives the right context to the, to the topic.